prosecutors telling the jury on Wednesday, Alec Murdoch is a skilled liar who murdered his wife Maggie and son Paul as his world was falling apart. They say the former attorney was facing questions about stealing millions from his firm and clients and a civil suit seeking millions from him after his son Paul was involved in a deadly boat accident. The entire illusion of his life was about to be altered. He couldn't live for that. In a passionate closing argument that lasted hours, the lead prosecutor painting Murdoch as a calculated killer and liar who manufactured an elaborate cover-up. But they say Murdoch was unable to refute one critical piece of evidence, placing him at the scene of the crime. This kennel video in which Alec, Maggie, and Paul can be heard speaking minutes before the murders. Murdoch admitting on the stand that he repeatedly lied to investigators about being there, in part blaming an opioid addiction which he says caused paranoia. Why in the world would an innocent, reasonable father and husband lie about that? Earlier in the day, jurors visited the Murdoch property known as Moselle to walk the area near the kennels, the feed room where Paul was killed, and outside the Murdoch home, even seeing a bullet hole in this window. During the trial, Murdoch repeatedly denied killing his wife or son. The state also suggesting in the minutes after the murders, Murdoch made multiple calls and texts on the way to his mother's house to manufacture an alibi. Among those he called his friend Chris Wilson, who recently sat down with Craig. How hard was it to agree to testify against your friend? It's hard because there's a relationship there that I thought was based on trust and respect and all of those things that when you find out it's not, it's hard to relive that. Prosecutors telling jurors Murdoch lied to everyone he ever knew. And he fooled Maggie and Paul too. and they paid for it with their lives. Don't let him fool you too. In another dramatic moment in closing, prosecutor Creighton Waters describing Maggie Murdoch's final moments, saying she heard those gunshots and started running, running toward her baby when she herself was mowed down by the only person that was conclusively there that night. Craig. It's Katie Beck for us in South Carolina. Katie, thank you. Let's bring in NBC's senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. Laura, good morning to you once again. Good morning, again. guys. Creighton Waters, uh, lead prosecutor for the state. Took him a while, I thought, to, to sort of land that plane. Mm. But when he did land it, it was a, a pretty solid landing. What did you make of, of, of the prosecution's close? I thought the prosecutor was on the strongest footing when he stuck to the timeline, mm -hmm. when he made sort of an appeal to common sense, and when he focused on the lies. I think when he started to delve back into the financial evidence, that's when you saw the jury sort of get a little bit sleepy again, at least according to reports in the courtroom. And I think, the, of course, the biggest piece of evidence here, guys, is that he is at the scene of the crime right before the murders take place. And what you saw the prosecutor say is, why would someone lie about that? If they're perfectly innocent, they have nothing to hide, why lie about that? And of course, the defense could say, well, maybe he was worried about being framed. But I think that that's where the prosecutor really sort of mm. made the most headway yesterday. It definitely grabbed my attention when you talked about the number of steps right. in that short amount of time. The other pro the prosecution scene for his motive was this whole talk about a gathering storm. Yeah. Was that persuasive? What did he mean by that? In theory, I think that could be persuasive. The idea is that you were just, you had so much pressure on you, and the release of that pressure ended up in the murder of his wife and child. But it's never been an intuitive motive, I think. Mm. The idea that that was going to invoke so much sympathy, it would distract everyone away from the financial crimes. What better way to invite scrutiny than to have a double homicide take place on your property? So that's mm. why it's, it's never been an intuitive argument, and I think you're going to hear the defense say that in closing today. Let's talk about the defense for a moment. Jim Griffin, the attorney for Alec Murdoch, one of the two attorneys there at the table. He's going to be presenting the, the closing arguments. If you were advising Jim Griffin this morning, what would you suggest he do? Lean into the kennel video, which everyone agrees is the most important thing because it places Murdoch at the scene of the crime. Lean into it and say, you don't hear any screaming. Mm. You don't hear any animosity. You don't hear any fighting. So this is a happy family. If, you were, if, you're, if your argument is that this is what happened right before the murders, you would think there would have been some sort of fight, some sort of commotion. Lean into it and say, you don't hear any of that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Laura Jarrett. Laura, thank you. Thank sure. you. Thank you. And a quick reminder, once again, we're going to have uh, a lot more on the twists and the turns of this trial. 
and perhaps reaction to a verdict as well. We'll have a special two-hour edition of Dateline tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, here on NBC. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.